Hey guys! Bleeding Through are back with a new song, new video, well, visualizer, it is what it is, and new album! It's been quite a bit of time. It's been a long time. Four years, I think? But it feels like ten. It feels like forty, because okay, of 40. the pandemic. I was trying to be nice, I was trying to be polite. But anyways, Bleeding Through, the name of the song is Rage, and I'm all for it. I'm all for it too. Are you ready? Yeah. Playing the record backwards? Oh no, it's not. Some power wolf. I love this shit. They're back. They are. They're uh, back with a vengeance I, and with I, rage. I gotta say that um, um, into the uh, uh, fit into the ash. Mm -hmm. That song, even though I haven't heard it in like it seems like forever, I still know word by word for that song. That either shows that it was really really good or it was at the time on liquid metal really really overplayed. Maybe both. Mo probably both. A little but, bit of a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Exactly and. I think, I mean, that song is still stuck in my head now, but uh, 
You it, think you think you're gonna get a little bit uh, washed away with this new one? Maybe not. But that track is great. That track is great and it's very that memorable. Is, yeah, very memorable. Obviously, but uh, that's why going into this, I was actually a little bit excited because it kind of taps back into that, taps back into those old memories. Because okay. it's like 2018. But enough of those old memories. There's new memories to be made. Exactly. So, so what do you what do you think about what do you think about this song music? Before we talk about the vocals, in uh, terms of the song construction, the I love the sound. I love the heaviness of the song. Uh, I, I like. I, I want to talk about okay. Let's talk about the the going with the let's talk about the start the the organ the the church organ the church the power organ. wolf the power wolf that you said like yeah. the power core the power wolf uh, church organs I liked them at the start and I also liked how they didn't just disappear right away no 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 they kind of morphed into that more eighties right when it hit vibe. the first chorus the first part of the clean vocals. Then, they start to morph. That's when they start to that's morph. That's when it actually just... It starts to morph and then fully disappear. Yes, but, which, but it's not like you snap your fingers and it's no, gone. No, no, it, it, it kind of morphs into something else. Yeah, it morphs into something else. else. And yeah, it it something into something else. else. Yes. And I enjoyed... Uh, that's that's good. That's really good because then it just didn't... It's not like it was just there for the start. You know, oh, here's something cool. No, there's a sense of progression. There's a sense of progression, which uh, it taps into something that you, you like to... Um, I don't but, like the sense of progression, but I also wouldn't have mind if they came back at the end. I was gonna say because you, you you're always you, you always say that in songs kind of like this where they have something really cool at the start and you kind of wish it would finish with that. Yeah, like songs that start, for example, with acoustic guitars and, and then you, you never want, hear and them then you again. Never hear it again, right? But but I, I think in this song, for as much as I love the song the way it is, I still think that w that w there is room for it because the same way those church organs morph into that more of an eighty synthesizer, then he can morph morphed out of the, those eighty synthesizers back into the church Maybe. organ, and then the song finishes off with the organ. Not, and I'm not saying the organ fading out at the end, but the song finishing with the organ playing those final notes, okay. almost to give it like a somber goth feel at the end. Because those clean vocals also have a little bit of a somber goth I, feel I was to gonna, them. I was gonna say it didn't need that, but fuck, now that you're saying that, maybe. Maybe it would have been nice, dude. I I, I honestly think you it, it would have complemented the song well. It, it, it probably would have. It probably would have because for me, uh, usually it's only if it's in the start and it never comes back. But the fact that the, the fact that they morph the fact that it kind they of, morphed, it, kind of it, it kind of makes it better. It, it, it makes it not feel like anything was lost. I agree. I feel like or anything is can, missing. I feel like stuff that can only be added now instead exactly. of being, uh, anything. No, lost. nothing is. That transition allows it to exist in the way that it does without the song feeling like. Like you said, like something is missing. I totally yeah, agree. But now only things but, can be added, just but like what you're saying. If the way the church organs morphed into that more 80s style synthesizer, if you have that 80s style synthesizer, then morph back into the church organs and you finish off with just like a somber note, like ping, 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 like to finish off, I, I think it would be phenomenal. Does it need it? No, ah, it's fine the way it is. But if it was there, man, I think if it was there, it would. <laughs> I don't know. It brings us on full circle. I, I just like when things kind of go full circle. That's, that's what I was saying. Me. Yeah, it's just me. Because I like that's what that. I, that's the first thing that came to mind. I like when that you like full things well, when they come full circle. I was gonna say it didn't need that, but no, it, it, do, it doesn't. It doesn't need that. It doesn't need that, but, but it would the be way cool. it would have been cool because the way it ends right now, it almost feels like it ends on a cliffhanger. Yeah. Right. If if you bring if you bring those church organs at the end, and if you morph them out of the keyboards uh, into that sound. I think it's it's you're telling a story that has a beginning, middle, and end, right? The way the song comes across now, it it ends almost on a cliffhanger. So, it, it's also the question then becomes, what is the next track on the album? How is that gonna go? Because maybe if, if you look at track, what, if the next track kind of picks up where this one left off, then, then you don't need it. it. Never need it. Yeah. Then you don't need it. And if you're listening to the album in the context of the record, then there's a sense of progression, and then you definitely don't need it. But we don't have the luxury of knowing what the next song is going to sound like, yeah. or even what what the hell the next song is going to be. So we can only look at what we have here, and based on what we have here, having that finish off the track, I think would complement the song really well. Yeah. It would be the two book ends, one on each side, and then you know you have, you have the everything else. In yeah, all the books in between. You know what I mean. So I, I, I think it would be, it would be nice. But once again, the song still works the way it is, and it works because of that fluidity of going into the, from the power core into what I'm gonna start calling it '80s black core. '80s black core. It, it did have the electric sound in the with the vocals at least oh with, the, the clean things. vocals brought the clean vocals in the electronic sound brought two things to me it brought a little bit of a dark almost sinister goth feel to the song uh it, it reminded me of um 
uh, what's unto others to a certain extent. But uh, there's another band that that um, Bloody Hammers. It reminded me a little bit of Bloody Hammers because Bloody Hammers is a band that uses a lot of that synthesizer 80s, 70s feel. It, it yeah. incorporates that into their goth rock sound. So it, it reminded me of Bloody Hammers quite a bit in, in in that moment. And then the clean vocals, everything, the sound, the vocals, everything kind of had that vibe there. But it also had a little bit of an arcade vibe. Like when you think about the 80s, when you think of TV shows like Stranger Things, that, that chorus sounds like it could be part of, of a scene in Stranger Things, it has that feel to it. So I kind of got that vibe. I got, I got the goth vibe, the goth rock vibe, and then I got that 80s sound arcade, you know, playing Space Invaders or Tetris or Pac-Man, whatever it is that you played back in the day. For me, it was uh, Bubble Trouble, you know, because that's how I rolled. And, and you know, like just joystick and... Just... It gives you that, that feeling. It gives me that feel of being in the arcade. The speakers are playing. There's fucking smoke everywhere your eyes start to burn from all the smoke that's inside the room uh yeah you know but you don't care you're with your people yeah you're hanging out you're playing you know there's guys playing pool and you're playing your arcades you know and you have a stack of 25 cent coins because back in the day there were 25 cent coins so that whenever you lose you can just fucking reload and you know, nowadays those 25 cent coin pillars would be gone I don't think you even use that now. No, but I was saying... Well, arcade place now it's just with a card now. Now it's with a card. Yeah, now it's with a card. Like you, you just can... preload your card. And you... It's not the same It's not vibe. 25 cents either. It's like $3 a game. And I used to put them right... Uh, because back in the day... I would get, we're going to get sidetracked, but I'm going to stop it right now. Uh, we used to have a little a little ashtray on the on the machines. Yeah. Because yeah. sm people smoked indoors, right? So uh, whenever you went to play... I didn't smoke, so I used the, the little ashtray that the machine had. The built-in ashtray... Uh, to put my coins there, and that's where I used the coins to play. Smart. But some guys would just obviously use the ashtray for what it was for to put you, because they, they would have the cigarette dabbing in their mouth when they were playing, and then they would put it there whenever they had to get a little bit more more aggressive. Going the hyper speed, st street fighting when you were playing Tekken. Oh fuck, Tekken was amazing. Playing Tekken, or or Street Fighter, yeah, or Street Fighter. I, I don't think I've ever played Mortal Kombat on arcades. But anyways, uh, the song kind of gave me that vibe. Do you get the same vibe? A I get the bit? same vibe, yeah, especially from obviously from the clean vocals. What did you think of the clean vocals? Outside of the fact that it gave you that guff, uh, how do you feel the clean vocals and interacting with a harsh vocal? I enjoyed it. I mean, it was a nice... The clean vocals were a, a, a nice... And a little bit of a choir, too. Like, a, yeah, it had some yeah, layers like to it. had it. some layers to it, but it was just a, a nice feeling uh, away from the harsh vocals because these harsh vocals were nasty. I mean, they, they, they had, obviously, a deepness to them, but at the start, they had a little bit of a, a nastiness to them. And I, I, I loved it, man. I also like the sound like... Duh, 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 duh. Yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. That fucking thumping sound like just comes at you like like jolts, like you're getting like multiple jolts of energy. I fucking love that. I, I thought that the harsh vocals were setting up the, what the clean vocals do because the harsh vocals bring the intensity, the harsh vocals and the heaviness of the sound. They bring the intensity of the song to this boiling point. Yeah. And when you think things are going to go completely over the top, they go in the complete different opposite it direction. It starts to die down. It starts to die down. It goes into this... Almost like dance, like you want to fucking dance. This mellow. Like I'm listening mood. to Aha. Like if Aha was a metal band, you you know you're like you know take on me, take on me. You know what I mean? Like the song was kind of like that. Like it had that 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 heavy moment where you just want to headbang and push people around and stage dive and whatever. And then it had the moment where you're like, do you want to dance? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it, it totally had that Pulp Fiction vibe it did, to it. You it know did. what I mean? I mean, so. the, the song, the song itself, uh, but it flows so well. The song itself somehow flows so well while in the the verse is taking you into different places, and then obviously that place it's taking you in the end is the is the the clean vocals, but it, it does take you into different places in the verses, yet without making you feel like it's taking you like you're completely lost so in far. It. Yeah, like you're not lost. You 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 know exactly where you're going. You know that you're going in different places. You're not really. It's not like not like Opeth, where I'm getting lost in the first three seconds of the song. No, Opeth is like going on a roller coaster blindfolded. Exactly. But this is going on a roller coaster, knowing that there's a huge draw coming ahead. So this you kind of a... you kind of know what you're getting yourself into. Like it's... it's a little bit more easier to digest. I think. Yeah. I think it's easier to digest. One more thing that we have to talk about before we call it a day on this video, and that is the the two guitar solos, yeah. or the two licks, whatever you want to call it. I, I thought they were phenomenal. I thought they were really good because they were both very different from each other. I mean, the, the first one was more... But they do the same thing. They do the same thing. They set up what's coming up after. And, they, and they're the perfect segue from what came up before. Exactly. They have the DNA of what came up before just to set up what, hap what happens, what happens after. after. Because... Uh, 
it has the DNA, the first one had the DNA of what came before, and it was more of a, a slower so, uh, solo, or lick, if you want to call it. Um, slow in, like, not slow, slow, but slower than the other one. And the other one it just gave you guns blazing. I mean, they were both, like, perfect in where they were. They, they, they couldn't have been anywhere else. They were perfect from where they were, and the sound itself was also the perfect sound for the solos. Yeah, it's, it's the perfect segue, like I said, from what came before, and then sets up what comes after. It was the perfect DNA mesh. And, and I was wondering, when I heard the first one, in that spot, I'm like, fuck, if you're going to put that in that spot... You have to have another one. You have to have another one the next time you come around. Because what what the fuck? Like, you, you're not going to do it? It's go Then it's, the song is going to completely feel unbalanced. Yeah. The scales have to be leveled. They have to be balanced. But I, at the same time, I was like, fuck, you cannot do the exact same. You have to... Yeah. It's going to sound repetitive. It's going to be this boring. It's repetitive. So, then it's not like an actual solo. Then it's just part of... Yeah, the then it's just course. more of a melody, a harmony. It's more of a harmony. But it, it, it's... it's I, I like the setup. I like the, the, how they did it because it, it, it allows the song to have... And you were talking about it's a track that takes you a lot of places but it doesn't feel broken. And I think even that portion that it's inserted there helps the song not to feel broken. It helps the song to have that sense of continuity. Yeah. Because it, you're expecting something there, but it, but they give you something that you didn't hear before, but sometimes somehow it feels like you heard it before because it has the same kind of, it has the same context and does the same thing. It's just, it's just made with different ingredients for lack of a better term. So I, I really, I really like that setup. It helps the song move along, it helps the con continuity of the song. And going from those uh, church organs, morphing into that synthesizer, more 80s sound. That was very cool. It was very cool because it allows that sound to then continue to become predominant throughout the song. And yeah. you kind of forget that the synthesizer, the, that the church organs were there earlier. But, but once again... you also forget that it's what set up everything else. Yes, but once again, if you can go out of that into the church... I understand. But, one, but also, once again, we don't know what the next song is and we don't know how it sounds like. Yeah, so, so the next song may actually either debunk what you're saying, like about the... It, yeah, the next song could, could, could... Continue really where this continue. one left yeah, off. Yeah, exactly. So it's hard to say. But I'm excited. I'm Fuck, this, excited. This, if, you, if you're going to release a first single after 40 years this since the last record, this is, this is definitely the way to do it. I mean, this song... The only way this could have been better is if it was a music video instead of yeah. just a, a visualizer. Which, technically, this visualizer is just an audio track. Yeah, I mean... With rage on with it. With rage on it, yeah. Yeah. All right, on that note, guys, thank you for watching this video. Let us know your thoughts on Bleeding Through. How excited are you about this upcoming record? It's been a long time. Hit us up, let us know, and we'll see you guys at the next video. See ya.